All right, so I want to talk about what's going to happen at the end of One Punch Man, but let me also clarify that the series is not over yet. It's not even close to being over, and I just have to put that out there because there's a lot of confusion, especially among, like, the casual fan base that I talk about more so in my God Explained video. There's, like, a few fan comics out there that kind of muddle this whole area, and there's a lot of people that don't really understand the continuity of the webcomic and how the manga works and all that stuff, so I just wanted to put that out there. It's not over. Uh, we're about, I don't know, 50% through the story at this point, at least in the furthest iteration of the story of the webcomic that is currently going on right now, which is much further than where the manga currently is. And I'll go more into that once we get past this spoiler wall. So yeah, I am going to be talking about what I think is going to happen at the end of the series, and I think I have a pretty good idea of that, but it means that I'm going to have to go into webcomic spoiler stuff. So if you don't want to know what's going to happen past what the manga currently is on, I suggest you check out now. So I feel that this series is ultimately going to culminate with the prophecy coming to fruition. The very same prophecy that we find out about in Season 1, where Shibawa, the great seer who had passed away, essentially says that in six months, the Earth will be in danger. Which basically means that there's going to be like a disaster level god threat that makes itself known. And this is also why I think that the series is about halfway through, you know, about 50% more or less, because... In Chapter 108 of the webcomic, Geno says that it had been over two months since he became Saitama's disciple. So that means that there's like three and a half months about until the prophecy comes to fruition, which means that we still got, you know, a good portion of the story to get through until that time. And I also feel that the series is going to end on the prophecy because one said in an interview that he's figured out the beginning and the ending of the series and that what he's just doing right now is filling in the middle. And in the beginning of the series, we find out about Vaccine Man, who is very likely tied to God, and we also get that prophecy pretty much at the beginning of the series, so this likely means that the prophecy is just the ticking clock for the series and the end goal of it. So speaking of God, that's who I think that this is all pertaining to, meaning that he's likely going to be the big bad at the end of the series, and I've talked about this many times throughout multiple videos. So in my video, what the prophecy is actually about, I hypothesize that what Shibawa is seeing in her future vision is essentially the same thing that Psycho saw in high school when she tapped into her third eye ability. They both saw that God is basically going to destroy humanity if he goes unchecked. Now, either they are literally seeing the future or they're seeing what could happen. It really remains to be seen at this point, but pretty much this all means that God is going to show himself or something else once the six months come to fruition. And I also feel that that's why Vaccine Man was set up in the very first chapter because he says that he was a product of the earth and that the earth is a living organism and that he must destroy all of the humans because of what they've done to the earth and i think that he's probably referring to god here being the will of the earth and that's lining up with also what homeless emperor talks about how god you know gave him the abilities to essentially destroy humanity for what they have done to the earth so i feel that that is all going to come to culmination once the six months pass. So as for how this all plays out after that, well, I assume it's going to be just standard battle manga trope stuff after this point, because we know that God can create powerful beings. In theory, he can create Vaccine Man that hasn't been confirmed yet, but it is definitely confirmed that he can create Homeless Emperor type beings. So what I assume is going to happen is that he's going to create a select few of like ultra powerful dudes, like more powerful than Homeless Emperor and Vaccine Man. And this is going to be like his Arankar or Akatsuki. And this is what I'm talking about, how it's going into trope uh, territory. And even though that has been done so much with our favorite battle manga series, I don't think it's been done to death. And I, and I think it works. It's like a fun trope and it's necessary because you want to see this play out in your favorite series, especially ones that haven't had this exactly happen yet. So we've kind of had it with the Monster Association, but not so much to the extent of like the Arankar or the Akatsuki. So that's what I think is going to happen with God. And this is also going to give us the final opponents for the S-Class heroes and whoever else is going to be a major part of the story at this time. Like, but we're going to have final opponents for everyone, more or less. As for Genos... 
like I talked about in my Mad Cyborg video, he might be the Mad Cyborg himself, or the Mad Cyborg might be somebody else. And I want to make another video about that, because I want to play devil's advocate with that subject. I want to talk about the Mad Cyborg possibly being somebody that we have already met, but I'll save it for that time. But also, the Mad Cyborg, being Genos' final opponent, might be recruited by God, and that might give Genos, you know, a bigger role in this arc overall. But as for the other S-Class heroes, they're likely going to fight these super powerful god power Arankar Akatsuki type dudes. Also, Pig God, we have to remember that he has that whole big final move ability attack thing that he alluded to in the Monster Association War, how he said he was going to save it for whatever the prophecy was. So this is obviously going to be confirmed the prophecy territory stuff. So we might see Pig God use this against one of the more powerful Arankar dudes, or he somehow confronts God himself and then uses it against him. And then God, of course, like tanks it. And then that's just a feat for God to establish how powerful he is. Because some dudes are going to have to job to God. It's just part of the course for this stuff. We have to establish how powerful he is. Even if we already have a good idea of it, we have to see it in action. Uh, and then also Garo is very likely to be a part of this arc. So we'll see Garo's final opponent as well and that's going to be awesome and everything and, and you know watchdog man he's going to have a final opponent we're going to see how powerful he is we're just going to see how powerful everyone else that we haven't seen yet uh, eventually go against these akatsuki arankar god powered guys so it's of course eventually going to end with saitama taking on god and i talk about this in depth in my video saitama's final opponent but more or less, I think that God is going to transport Saitama to an alternate dimension or something. Maybe a different plane of existence, similar to where he took Homeless Emperor, like, in his mind when he killed him. So, and this gives Saitama uh, a way to fight at his full power without having the Earth in danger. Because we saw him just throwing one serious punch at the sky, like, parted all of the clouds, like, pretty much like the atmosphere of, like... The, uh, the half of the planet almost so imagine if he just threw like consecutive serious punches he would uh, probably destroy the earth so we're gonna have to have saitama somewhere where the earth isn't going to be in danger and this is a perfect setting for that and god is uh i guess going to push saitama the furthest that he's ever been pushed and i'm sure saitama will fight other strong opponents before this but god is going to give saitama that fight that he's been chasing after he's going to finally have Saitama reach that state of satisfaction, like almost like a Nirvana-like state because he's been chasing the dragon the whole entire series and he's finally going to get what he wants and then he will be ultimately satisfied with the conclusion of this fight and he will no longer feel the way he does and he'll be like, okay, I, I finally went after what I wanted and this will be like Saitama's happy ending. So after he defeats God, I assume that the entire Hero Association, every single hero, every single executive, is going to finally bear witness to Saitama's greatness, and they will all acknowledge him as being the one above all. Now, two things could happen after this point. Either Saitama revels in it and is like, cool, now everybody knows that I'm the best, I accept the glory. But I also think that Saitama doesn't want that. You know, being a hero is just a hobby to him, and it probably always will be, and he doesn't want all of the pressure and all of the attention that comes with being the, you know, the unanimous one above all. He doesn't want to be the poster boy. He doesn't want to be like the all might of this world. So it's possible that Saitama puts all of the credit on King. Because King already is that role. And it's likely that he needs to stay that way. Because that is King's true purpose in this world. Is to be the symbol of peace more or less. So either Saitama actively tells them to give the credit to King. Or he just manufactures it. So that King gets the credit. But then it also goes into what I think is that even if Saitama does get the credit, is that it will be in secret. And that the Hero Association will label Saitama differently from now on. They'll see him as their secret weapon. Which multiple strong villains have kind of said that Saitama was throughout the series. Like, oh, you're the secret powerful final weapon that the Hero Association has. So he might literally become that. And his hero name will change to One Punch Man, or the One Punch Man. Regardless of how we get to this point, I feel that this is like 97% chance of happening. That Saitama's name will no longer be Kate Baldy and it will change to One Punch Man or the One Punch Man. And then he'll be like beyond ranking, so beyond classics. Like maybe S-Class rank 0 or something like that, or he's just simply the secret weapon 
of the Hero Association. And then after that, I think that he'll probably wind up with one of the Psychic Sisters, or at least I really hope he does, and I think things are headed that way as well. Uh, I don't think one intends for Saitama to be alone at the end of the story, or at least he's going to plant the seed of them being together. Maybe they decide to go on like a real date or something, but I hope it's with Buki, but it very likely could be Tatsumaki as well. Like seeds have been planted in both of them, no pun intended, but that's pretty much it. That's where I see the series. Saitama is going to get what he wants and he's probably going to go back to living the mild life that he has before but just being the secret weapon of the Hero Association and uh, everything essentially goes back to normal. I'm not sure what's going to happen with Genos but that's pretty much it. If you liked it guys please give it a like and let me know what you think is going to happen at the end of the series. Do you think I'm more or less spot on with what I'm talking about here or am I way off? Just let me know 
Uh, and also, I have a Patreon. It gives you access to a weekly Q&A. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next